And this would appear to be the start of the Strawberry Trail. I've parked up in a free car park in Botley to take on this trail, which is about 16 miles. It consists mostly of three interconnected circular walks. First one's about a mile and a half, the second one's about two and a half miles, and the last one's about nine and a half miles. I think I'm just going to have to get used to mud today, to be honest. There's no signage as yet to tell me I'm on the right path. Oh, what's this? Ah, a strawberry. Okay, so what do I know about the strawberry tail trail? Nothing. Except for what I've read on Wikipedia and the Hampshire website. It was designed by, or put together by Eastley Parish Council to celebrate strawberry growing, which used to be a very important industry in this area. The only reason I chose it was because it's relatively close to where I live, 45 minutes. It's circular and it was six, 16 miles long, which is about what I wanted to walk today. Uh, interestingly, if you Google Strawberry Trail, you get three different versions at least. One's 14 miles and doesn't seem to include the smaller two loops. Uh, one is 28 miles and includes a very large loop at the top end going through right the way through to Hedge End. The one I'm using comes from the Long Distance Walkers Association, which I quite liked. It does mean that if you want to do part of this walk and not all of it, sorry, right, having to concentrate, bit of mud. Um, you can do the one and a half mile top loop, you could do the two and a half mile second loop, or if you just wanted to do the bottom loop, there is nine and a half mile bottom loop. When you get to this bit, no entry signs. I then discovered this path actually goes down here. What I've also discovered is because I was zooming in too far on my GPS, I actually went anti clockwise around the first circle. So I must remember to do anti clockwise on the way back. I'm planning, or was planning, to do clockwise around each circle. So uh, I put that down to lack of coffee. Yes, this is the bit I just walked. I'm now walking back up it, as I, I appear to have missed the turning. <laughs> See these things all over, and I've never seen anyone building them. I don't know why. You would have thought you'd see somebody building them. This is Doc's Doc Coppice. This is becoming a little bit of a challenge, this muddy bit. But as you can tell by all the footprints, 
this is a very popular walk right i'm going to do the stepping stones hey stepping logs here we go up here This walk does follow the trail of the Hamble Valley and the Hamble River. So, <coughs> jumping up the wooden bit of the steps seems to be the best way to avoid the mud at the moment. Oh. Okay, it's slightly muddier than I thought. Oh, I've got a strawberry trail sign as well, so I must be in the right place. The sun is just coming over the top of the hills now and casting beautiful shadows as I get my first view of the Hamble River on this walk. As I'm walking, I think I see lots of little offshoots in the path that go down to little benches. But just look at this view. So we're now entering the connecting bit between the second and third circles so I'll walk along this one later Dot Cops gave way to Catland Cops doing that and I have to say both were very popular with dog walkers but look at the views that I've got this morning. The road we're now going under is the N27. A road I've travelled often, and to be honest, I never knew there was a footpath underneath it. It's weird being underneath the motorway though. This is the start of the second loop, sorry, third loop. Burstow Station, or Burst, Burlesden Station, has a free car park as well. So if you do just want to do the second, oh God, I keep saying second, third loop, then this would be a good place to park. This station, notice I'm avoiding the name of it, also has the only historical fact that I can find about the Strawberry Trail. Apparently this station was where horse and carts used to bring strawberries from the old strawberry growing industry to be loaded onto special strawberry trains to go up to London. That's the only fact I can find about the whole of this trail. Believe it or not, this is listed as the High Street of Burlesden. I do have an apology to make though. I said this, was put, this walk was put together by the Eastleigh Parish Council. Uh, apparently, according to the street signs, they're a borough council. I will put links for the stuff I've mentioned like the Long Distance Walkers Association 
website in the description if you want to download the GPX map or have a look at the detailed map. We're just entering Mallard's, Mallard's Moor. One thing I have noticed on these, this walk is these little strawberry trail signs are a bit hit and miss. They seem to turn up every so often. There's always a footpath sign, but it doesn't always contain that little strawberry trail sign. So I would recommend making sure you know the route before you leave. Just after crossing over the railway line, there's a bit which looks like you have to walk on the road and having seen it there is no path beside that road so I wasn't very keen but there is a little pathway just as you come off the track through the hedge and that seems to be what everyone uses so that's what I'm on now this is and it's much nicer than being on the road, that's for sure. Having rejoined the track again, just notice this thing in the bush, assuming it's for some sort of rodent over the hill. Must be a few of them, also trying to encourage the population. Just come through Hamble, which doesn't seem to be embracing the whole footpath sign policy. That's the only one I've seen. I'm just about to go into Hamble Common, which we walk through. Just walking along the edge of Hamble Common now. Looking at the map, I thought it was a bit strange that it doesn't take you around the, the seaward side and it takes you over towards the road. And actually, on the map, it looks like again you're walking on the road, but actually, you're not. There's a, a very good path here you can see and that's actually the the common we could walk round if you're down here in the summer I'd be tempted to go round take that loop around Hamble Common as well this car park at Hamble Point is free if it's one of the ones you want to park at Get a lovely view over towards the oil refineries. And it's very windy. Well, I certainly can't say I'm not getting any variety. Just got off the beach. I really don't like walking on shingle. Because we're on this. Then we have a, a decorated pillbox, I think is the uh, best way to describe it. A few relics of bygone walls. There was a gun earlier. Cathedral. 
been a bit of a revelation, really. Very busy. Lots of people. Understandably so, it's very nice. Decided to stop and have my lunch. Loads of car parking in there if you ever want to visit. Looked like a really good place. Really popular. This walk's really beginning to grow on me. Reminds me of a... Reminds me of the Isle of Wight coastal path, really. Uh, it's very similar in as much as it's got a bit of everything. There's been woodland, there's been housing, there's been coastal, there's been some, been some really beautiful bits. And there's been some bits which are obviously there just to get us from one circle to another, really. It's a cheeky little walk. It's nice. Oh, this is very peaceful. Mental note, buy yourself a baseball cap. Woolen hat was not really necessary today. Finally, I think I've done about three miles since Stanley Park, and this is the first one of the little strawberry signs I've seen. There's the, the cemetery. And if you need it, there is a tap up in that far corner that I'm carrying on. Back down here, where I believe I pick up the road again, and then it's dropping down into the railway station. And there's the station, so we're at the end of that nine and a half mile loop. And now we do this connecting bit between that loop and the second loop. So going back through the marina bit, just after the M27, you see some very funny sights that I didn't actually see on the way out. Walking along the river Hamble again. Right. We're at the splitting point for the second circle again. We were here many hours ago. And the, uh, the symbol doesn't appear to be there, so but I know it's this way. There we go. That's how it's a good sign to see. Walking through Vantage Coppice now. There's no hint on the OS what these could be. There appears to be four concrete bases with steps. You can only assume that they housed some sort of wooden structure on top, perhaps a barracks or something. Yep, there's definitely something. There's loads of them. Now just going up a very well made track beside the road back to Manor Farm which will actually be the the end of the second loop. Well, this place is a lot busier than it was this morning. Loads of interesting things at Manor Farm. This just happens to be on the public footpath. There's a little dog who tried to entice me to throw his bowl for him. I've fallen for that game before. 
Well, coming to the end now. The Garmin saying that it's just shy of 16 miles. I believe I'm the first person to post a YouTube video about the Strawberry Trail. So uh, hopefully it will be used to people. I'm trying to find the, the start that I did this morning. So I believe it's just up here. Yeah. So this is the end of the Strawberry Trail. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Please like, please comment. And there's where we started this morning. <laughs>